Congratulations. Today is your day. We got five years. There will always be things in the way you dream. Five years. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Ankle Cast. I just shit my bed. Yeah, uh, this month was this last month of April was a difficult month for me. I'm not exactly sure what the deal was with it, but uh, I had a really hard time doing anything. I just shit my drawers. And it's really disappointing because before I got that way, uh, I was doing. <sighs> relatively well yeah I there was a weight loss contest going on at work and up until the start of April I was in second or third place I was in a spot where I would have won money um, I think the uh, second place prize was $65 and the first place prize was 130 and there was two second places one for female one for male I would have won the male second place prize had I stuck with it I just shipped my nighty but instead yeah I uh, I I didn't I fell apart I fell off of the wagon as far as that goes uh, which was really frustrating um, and the sad thing is it came from something you would think would be something that would help. Um, I was working in our backyard the whole time uh, over spring break, which was the very start of April. Spring break happened. I took a few days off of work so I could be home when the kids are home and I could be home when my wife had also taken days off. And what we wound up doing instead of anything fun was working on a flagstone patio in our backyard. This turned out to be a huge amount of work. Uh, we worked on a day in and day out for several days, and each day I was so tired by the end of the day that I could have just dropped. Um, and now, I don't know if anybody else listening is like this, but I have heard that there is something called uh, sympathetic, no, that's not it, sorry, it's called comfort eating. Basically, when things are bad for you, when you're stressed, you, um, you eat, you know, it, it's, it's a way to make yourself feel better, um, and I'm totally a comfort eater. Um, my Kung Fu Panda, I just happened to see Kung Fu Panda with the kids the other day, and yeah, he was the same deal. He was eating all those peaches at one point, and, and uh, his sensei or whatever the heck mentions that, yeah, oh, I know you eat when you're afraid, when you're nervous, when you're having problems, which is totally me. When I'm having pr troubles, and it doesn't, doesn't have to be a real trouble, like that wasn't a trouble making a patio. It was just tiring, and it's one of those things where when I go through a hard day, I think, oh, I deserve a treat. I deserve something special for having done so well during this, this hard time. And so I worked all day long, and then I got, like, uh, you know, 44-ounce soda after 44-ounce soda. I had donuts and cookies and all sorts of crap as treats. And I figured, oh, I'll be okay because I'm working a ton. And... That will counteract, you know. I, I used way more calories than I normally will, so if I eat way more calories, I should be fine. But of course, the real problem is that PI, anyways, people are creatures of habit. And this, you develop a habit and you keep doing it. So I would probably have been fine if I had just done this stuff only when I was working really hard, but once I was done working really hard, I was now in the habit of drinking soda and in the habit of eating cookies and donuts and pizza and etc. 
Um, before that, I was denying myself those things most of the time. There were times when I would give in, but most of the time, I would deny myself these things. And, uh, and that worked. But once I let myself have it, then it was like the floodgates were open and there was no shutting them. Too much dang water was coming out. And uh, the door mechanisms just didn't even have enough power to get that closed back off again. And so, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't stop. I came back from spring break and I kept being bad and I gained more weight and I kept being bad and I gained more weight. And pretty soon, I gained back almost all the weight that I'd ever taken off from this contest, uh, which was super frustrating. I don't know. I had plans for whatever money I managed to win from this contest. I was going to use it to uh, to buy books to go on my bookshelf. Um, Rish has been helping me. He's been looking at all the thrift stores and places like that that have old books looking for stuff that's uh, that's cool, that's interesting I have these gigantic bookshelves in my study you know and I've got it set up so that there's books on some shelves and, or on, well there's books on all shelves but then there'll be little spaces where I put like my Optimus Prime toy or my uh, Star Destroyer toy or my uh, Avengers figures or whatever so it's a, I think it's a really cool thing. The problem is I'm really low on books and I have way too many toys. So I've been trying to get books, but I don't just want to have any old books. I don't want to just have like the Swedish books that they put on the shelves at Ikea to make it look like there's books on the shelves. I want to have books that I actually like. And so Rich has been watching for books like that for me whenever he goes to thrift stores, which he does a lot because he'll buy uh, use toys and then sell them on eBay. So I managed to get a bunch of books, but I didn't manage to get the money to pay for them. I owe Rish probably at least, I don't know, 60 bucks, maybe more by now. And uh, he's just being nice and hasn't, you know, demanded. Um, I suppose if I were him, I would just stop sending me the text saying, hey, do you want this book? Do you want that book? <laughs> Until he got some money, but uh, he, he, uh, he keeps asking. Anyways, yeah, I blew it. I didn't get that money um, because I, I let myself off the hook. Um, I guess when it comes down to it, it can be compared to writing. Uh, which is basically what this podcast is supposed to be about, is my writing. And writing, uh, back in, I don't remember when it was, I had a plan to write every single day. And there were some days where I only wrote 20 words or something like, you know, something ridiculously small. And I thought, you know what, this is stupid. I'm going to stop doing that and just stick with, okay, I have to hit my goal and uh, yeah, that didn't work out. I think some people advised me to not do that, to write something every day, no matter what, because it will keep that in your head and you won't just suddenly stop writing, which is kind of what I have also done. Why do I not write? I guess suppose it's easier to not write. It's also easier to just eat whatever the hell I want and just follow any, uh, any urges that I have. I just in my pants and it's very convenient. Yes, yes, very convenient. Um, it's so much easier to not, to not try really hard. Oh, but you never get anywhere when you do that. Um, I think that's something that I need to set for myself. I need to write, work on writing every single day within by the time the next ankle cast comes along, it will be Nano Dumo, Dupo Rimo. Uh, it'll be <laughs> me and Rish are going to start working on novels. Um, we're supposed to start June. June is our starting point. 
and uh, by the time the next ankle cast comes out, especially if it is late like this one is, uh, we'll be a week into it at least. Um, so, you know, that's something that's going to take a lot of effort. I think I need to get myself doing it every day to get myself prepared for this uh, novel writing month thing, because we're supposed to write a novel in 90 days. So from June, July, August, those will be our three months. By the end of August, by September 1st, we should be done. Is that going to happen? Well, I don't know. Uh, but even if we're not done, you know, we keep going until we finish. Uh, that's the plan. And, uh, yeah, I need to get myself into it the same way that I need to get myself into the habit of eating only what's good for me again, which is really tough. Um, there's this person who has a blog, and I started reading her blog, and she talks about her weight loss journey. And, uh, yeah, she talked about that in one of her blog entries, how, you know, she wanted to have... A somewhat normal life so when Christmas time came around she gave herself a cheat day or a cheap couple of days where she could eat whatever she wanted and then she got back on her plan and started eating what she was supposed to again but it was really hard because she was hungry uh, early and often because she I guess stretched her stomach out to a larger level by eating whatever she wanted and uh, she fell back off the wagon and had uh, a real problem and gained like five pounds. Um, just like I did. Because she allowed herself to go crazy. Um, I think planned treat, cheat meal or cheat dessert or whatever a few times a week is probably okay but it has to be planned. It can't be spur of the moment. You can't just allow yourself to have whatever you want. And just like with writing, you also, you got to write every day. Um, I've been reading this blog by, uh, by Dean Wesley Smith. He's got this new uh, set of posts on his blog called The uh, Stages of Fiction Writing. And it's the various stages that people go through as they become fiction writers. You start out, when you first start out, you're just always focused on the words. Your words have to be pretty, they have to be special, they have to be something amazing. You'll polish that story, rework sentences, rework things, just to the uh, nth degree. And basically what happens is you take all the uniqueness out of your story when you do that and you don't get anywhere when you do that also you're not focusing on what's most important um, which is the story the characters the setting those kind of things are what you should be focusing on and that's when you when you finally realize that the words aren't the most important thing you move from stage one into stage two and then uh, he talks about in his particular life, he moved from stage two to stage three when he came across Rob, uh, Robert Heinlein's uh, rules for writing. And they're really simple rules, but, it, but Heinlein also says they're very difficult rules because uh, they're just really hard to fulfill. Um, and the rules are one, and most important one, you must write. That's it, just you have to write. And that, I, I still, in all these years, all this time of talking, have not been able to fulfill rule one. I don't write every day, I don't make a habit of it. And, um, and, Dean Wesley Smith said that in like I want to say 1984 he 
made himself a goal that, okay, I am going to fulfill these Heinlein rules. Um, and he started working on them. By the end of the year, he was selling stories uh, all over the place. And, uh, and yeah, you know, rule number one, write. Rule number two, finish what you write. So you can't just quit, abandon your story in the middle. You gotta find a way to make it work. Keep going, push to the end, because getting to the end is something you need to learn to do. And it's, um, it's important. Um, don't rewrite. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't polish your story over and over again. Um, submit your stories to, for publishing. Uh, and this is important for several reasons. A, obviously, what the hell are you writing for if you're not going to share it with anybody and uh, get it out there? But B, you get feedback from editors when you send them stories. Sometimes you don't get feedback. Sometimes your feedback is just form rejection letter. But uh, sometimes they'll give you uh, some suggestions. They'll tell you what you might need to make that story or your writing in general uh, to, you know, to get it to that next level. And uh, then the last rule is to keep submitting it. So when you get that first rejection, you don't quit. You don't say, well, this story's no good. Let's throw the garbage. Keep going. <sighs> and you can do that with books. You can do that with short stories. It's something that I really need to push myself to do so that I can become an actual writer and I guess when you get to stage three and you start doing these things you start learning things about the markets that you submit to what markets are out there what they're looking for stuff like that part of becoming a stage three writer is learning a little bit about the business of being a writer as well um, I don't know it's uh, it's something that I really 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 need to work on and also, I need to come up with uh, more interesting words because somebody put out an email at work talking about 15 words that you should just remove from your vocabulary, and really was one of them. Um, instead of saying, really need to work on, I don't know exactly how you would replace that, but there are other words that you should use to uh, add emphasis, I guess. Anyways, that's a side point. Uh, so today's ankle cast is a little bit different. As April was coming to an end, I was feeling pretty darn irritated with myself about how little that I had managed to accomplish in April. And so one day I sat down and I wrote a story. It was just a little, it's basically a drabble, but it's not a drabble because it's a thousand words long, but it's just, you know, a, a little joke is all it is. And uh, I sat down and I wrote this story and I thought, you know what, I'm going to write this story and then I'm going to record it for the ankle cast and I'm going to use it on the ankle cast. And uh, so today, for the second time ever, I have a story for my show. Uh, I didn't put it at the start because I figure if anybody's listening to this podcast just for the stories, they would have stopped a long time ago because there's only ever been one. So here's story number two ever. Um, story's called A Million Miles. And, uh, you know, this is me trying to get myself back on track. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Here it comes talk about it in a little bit. One Million Miles by B.D. Anklevich. She 
she was gone, and I had to get used to the idea. I sat down and slid my chair in under the table. My old friend Marco sat across from me, and the waiter asked us what we wanted to drink. Well, water's fine, Marco said. A Budweiser, I said. I didn't usually drink at lunch, even on a Saturday, but she was gone, so I didn't care. Starting early, huh? Marco asked. Hey, it's Saturday, right? I said with a forced smile. I wondered if Marco could tell. I hadn't seen him in almost a year, so I was willing to bet he couldn't recognize the difference between a sincere smile and a fake one. So, tell me what you've been up to, dude. I was pretty sure his smile was genuine. He launched into the history of his activities from the previous year, most of which I'd seen on Facebook already. This lunch was unnecessary, but she was gone, so I was desperate for anything to distract me. Marco and I grew up together, and were still nominally best friends, despite the fact that adult life had pulled us apart. First geographically, when I went to college in Wisconsin, and then got a job and stayed there for six years. Then, situationally, when Marco got married and had several kids, making it awkward for us to hang out. I didn't get married. Instead, she was gone. Gone forever this time. Our relationship had been tumultuous at times. I'd been with Shawnee for longer than Marco had been with his wife, Ronika but we'd probably broken up on at least 20 separate occasions in that time. Sometimes just for a day or two, sometimes for a week or more, and once for two and a half years. Like a planet and its moon, however, we always came back around together. We'd seemed to have been trapped endlessly in orbit around each other, but that was over. She was gone for good. She was in orbit around another planet now. Well, not yet, but she would be soon enough. The trip only took about two months these days. It wouldn't be long before she was at the top of the space elevator, awaiting her ticket down to the surface. When it was my turn to give my report on my activities of the year, I played down the breakup. Marco was used to it, since we'd broken up so many times. He was surely expecting her orbit to come back around. He didn't know she was gone for good. Instead, I talked up my new hobbies of woodworking and gardening. I talked about my composter and my bandsaw. I never told him that Shawnee had gone to Mars and that she, of course, wasn't coming back. How could she? Mars was a one-way trip. A human body went through too many changes when put in one-third of the gravity it was designed to exist in. It only took a year to make a return trip untenable, and Shawnee had signed on for a five-year contract. Our food arrived and I dug in. Each time I had to chew, my morose mood was disguised for at least a moment. Marco was still oblivious, but I didn't want to clue him in. I felt awful enough as it was. If he started trying to commiserate with me, I would surely lose it and start blubbering like a spanked child right here in the middle of this olive garden. The conversation turned to sports, which was so much safer. I was happy to talk about how the Packers had choked in the championship game last year. Up until yesterday, when I had watched Shawnee's shuttle blast up and out of Earth's gravity well, I would have found the topic unbearable. That had been the worst thing that had happened in two years or more for me. Now, it was insignificant. I didn't care about anything that didn't have long black hair and creamy brown skin. I only wanted to hear her deep, rich laugh and feel her soft body in my arms. This last year, she had become my fiance. It looked like our days of breaking up and getting back together were over. It had been Mars that had finally driven us apart for good. Shawnee wanted to go. I didn't. 
I wasn't willing to give up everything that I had here on earth forever to keep her by my side. I wondered if it was another test. She'd put me through enough of them over the years. A good half of our breakups had been the result of my failing one test of hers or another. But if it had just been a test, would she have blasted off like she did? And so soon. When she tested me, it was always to help me learn what she wanted. Then that gravity would pull us back together and we'd be happier than we had been before. But now, she was gone for good. Marco talked on and on about football. He talked about his favorite team, the Raiders, their new draft pick, their retiring quarterback, their three suspended substance abusers. I didn't care. I said, yeah, and uh-huh, at the appropriate times. At least I thought I did. Mostly, I was wondering just how far away she was now. Mars could be as close as 35 million miles away, and as far as 250 million, depending on where they were in their respective orbits around the sun. On average, it was 140 million miles. She was only a day into her two-month journey, though, meaning she was something like a million miles away? Maybe as many as four million? A million miles. A thought made my heart clench involuntarily. I had been wrong. I'd failed another test. Nothing on Earth was worth not having her at my side. All the Earth, its people and possessions combined, weren't worth the loss of my soulmate. I needed to go after her. They needed people on Mars so badly it would be a cinch to get my own contract. Verge? Marco was talking to me. I'd stopped listening and lost the thread. Virgil, you there, man? Uh, what? I was just asking you if you thought Mamadou Jackson would be back next year, and you just stared off into space, Marco said. Oh, sorry, Marco. I was a million miles away. And soon... I'd be closer to 140 million miles away. Okay, so that was the story. Like I said, it was just a little silly thing. Basically, the, uh, the phrase, I was a million miles away when somebody's talking to you and you're not paying attention, uh, made me think about what is a million miles away? That's a long ways uh, beyond just on Earth. Um, turns out it's not so far as Mars, which is what I was hoping. <laughs> but... Uh, it's somewhere in between. The sun is 93 million miles away. I learned that a long time ago when I was watching uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Somebody won a million dollars by determining that it was 93 million miles away and not 9.3 million miles away, 930 miles, million miles away, or, you know, etc. Um, so yeah, the sun is 93 million miles away, and the thing about the sun is that it remains 93 million miles away. Mars, however, is orbiting the sun just like us, and so sometimes it's close, and sometimes it's very far, very far away. Uh, but yeah, um, it was just a silly thing to use that phrase in a way 
that meant that that person really was a million miles away in their mind because they were thinking about somebody who was a million miles away. I don't know if it was even worth listening to. If you guys liked it, uh, leave me a comment and let me know that you did because I'll, maybe I can make that a, a, a goal to write and record a quickie story like that every, uh, every ankle cast. It shouldn't be hard. I mean, a thousand words is an hour's work. Reading a thousand words is uh, 15 minutes work. And editing it down is, well, it's at least 15 minutes because you have to listen to it through. But it really doesn't take all that long as long as I'm not doing sound effects, getting other people to do the, uh, the other voices and so forth. It's not that big of a deal. So I'd say maybe a half hour to edit a story like that down. So less than two hours, I can do that once a month, right? Well, maybe that's asking too much. That two hours is, is uh, that's actual effort. I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the one thing. Uh, the other special thing, okay. The other special thing that I have for uh, AnkleCast listeners today is uh, I have a, a feedback question. Now, somebody sent me a feedback question. Anybody can do this, by the way. If you want to just record yourself asking me a question about something that you want to know, or even just like saying, hey, keep, keep at it. You're, you know, you can do it or anything like that. You know what? I will put that on the show. I will include it. Um, and, uh, and we will have it. So I have this feedback question from a listener, a listener named Rish Outfield. I, uh, maybe you guys know this person. His name sounds familiar to me. I'm not sure why, but anyways, Rish Outfield sent me a question, um, about the show and about something that goes on on the show. So let me just play that for you and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Hey, Big, this is Rish. I uh, just listened to your last Outcast. No, that's my show. I just listened to your last uh, Anklecast, and, uh, you know, you end with that. Is it called Crossing the Divide by Kevin McLeod? Is it Kevin McLeod? From the Clan McLeod. And uh, it's got the little quotes in there interspersed, and uh, I don't know. It's pretty stirring. I like the... I like what you've put together there. And I thought I would ask you this for your next ankle cast. Uh, would you explain where that came from? How you discovered that song uh, and all the quotes? Who were saying the quotes? And uh, uh, how long did it take to put that together? And was it worth it? Do you listen to the, Do you listen to your own show? Does that inspire you to hear Crossing the Divide? It's, uh, and have you heard from anybody else if it inspires them? Because it is really a, a neat, uh, it's, a, it's a motivational, I mean, I think the, the music by itself is probably motivational, but then it's got these little quotes, and it would be neat to find out where those came from. And uh, did I ask you how long it took for you to put that together, and was it worth it? I can't remember, but... Maybe you can use this in a future episode. Be well. All right, so that was Rish's question. He wanted to know about Crossing the Divide, which is a Kevin McLeod song. So yeah, uh, that song came from Incompetech.com. How did I find it? Basically, I went there and just started looking for something. I want to say that he probably has some kind of a category that more or less describes uh, inspirational or something. I could be totally wrong. Problem is it was six months ago, more or less, when I made that. So I have to admit I've forgotten some of the specifics. But I went there and I listened to a few songs and I think I may have picked one song and even started with it and then uh, then I found that one and I was like, oh, hell no, this one is it. And so, yeah, I mean, that song, when I first put it on, I was inspired by it 
without any of the quotes or anything on it. I was just sitting there. And when I went to put the quotes on, it was kind of hard because I didn't want to cover up the song. There was some really good and really uh, inspiring parts of the song. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just leave this part without a quote. And then I'll pick the quotes back up here later. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a little difficult to even make it work. Um, but yeah, what I did basically is I tried to think of all the different quotes that we've done through the years that were inspiring. So auto automatically I went looking for Kevin Smith because uh, these days on YouTube you can get anything, anything you can get. And so I went looking for Kevin Smith's Why Not from the year that Rich was talking about it. I don't think I found the actual uh, time, the, the panel on Comic-Con Comic when he did that. But I found a version of him doing the Why Not thing. I think it was actually the one that, where that Rich hates where he talks about how his dad died um, but he also talks about why not in that same thing and he said why not a bunch of times and I thought okay this is the stuff and so I just recorded that bit and uh, then I went looking for uh, this quote uh, one of the quotes that I mentioned um, I want to say I mentioned it in a blog or somewhere I learned about it from uh, an article about a soccer team that they put in my hometown of Sacramento. And the guy's quote was that a, a goal is a dream with a deadline. And I thought, okay, that's cool. And so I, he said that it came from some motivational speaker or something like that. I searched and I found the... Uh, motivational speaker he was talking about saying that exact quote and on top of the thing that made it even better was that he said that quote and uh, then he added in my little catch line because my thing was that it was a five-year plan that I was making I was gonna be there in five years and I got David Bowie singing his five years song which unfortunately I couldn't get into the the motivational thing because the music in the background ruined it it wouldn't work with the other music so I left the, that's what made me decide to make intros for the for the podcast where it would go five years have a quote five years have a quote etc and then uh, I just had the one big long thing which had quotes without the five years but in that quote where he says a dream is a or a goal is a dream with a deadline and then he says, that's why I gave you five years. He just happened to say that. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is serendipity. If I have any idea what that word means, then that is it. And so, I don't know, I thought that was great. I can't remember the name of the guy who does the quote, unfortunately. But it's a motivational speaker guy. And if you were to go to Google and search a dream is a goal with a deadline, or a goal is a dream with a deadline... <laughs> You would, it would come up. You'd be able to find out what his name is. It's like uh, Zip Zipper. What's that guy's name? I can't remember the motivational speaker guy who has a weird name like that. It's, it's the one that uh, Dave Ramsey always mentions in all his, you know, get your finances in order. Um, let's see. What other quotes are there on there? There's obviously the Dr. Seuss stuff from... Uh, from... Uh, <sighs> Oh, the places you'll go. Uh, you know, that... Was that our first? I think that may have been the... No, I think the why not thing came first. And then the, the Dr. Seuss thing came after. But yeah, I took our version that we'd done of it. That we'd sent out for our, uh, our donors. Um, and then I, try, I actually tried to get some other versions. The real problem with putting stuff on... Uh, is the music in the background um, it made it really difficult to also put it over some other music and so I had to find different versions I found some version read by some English woman where she's like will you succeed? yes you will indeed 99 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed 
Ew, there's a store right by me called Fetal Photos. That's kind of, I don't know why, but that sounds really gross. Although back in the day when I was having children that were still fetuses, I probably would have thought that was neat. I remember I loved ultrasounds, but fetal photo just sounds yucky. Anyways, <laughs> back to the point. I had that. Let's see what else is in there. I did put on Phineas and Ferb saying, I know what we're going to do today. Um, which I love. Uh, and, and, oh, there was one, there's one quote on there that's from the guy. There was a guy just, he was a motivational dude that we did a story about at work. And uh, one of the things he said was like, today is the first day or something. I can't even remember exactly what the quote is, but it's just like, everything before now doesn't matter. Now is the start. And from here on, you just do what you're supposed to. Now is the beginning. And I thought, you know, that's rad. I'm going to, I'm going to put that on there. And so I just grabbed it and put it on there as well. Um, what other quotes are on there? Wonder if I can remember. I'm sure there's more. Um, oh, you know, one other one that they had, and I had to leave my favorite bit of it off because of, again, the background music that it came from, but there was a commercial for, I want to say American Family Insurance, some insurance company where they're like, oh, you come up with a dream and we'll insure your dream. We'll take the money from you that you would have been able to put into your dream and just put it in our pocket. And then when you come back to us and say, hey, I need that insurance to pay off, we'll come up with a loophole to get us out of pain. I'm sorry, that's just my general uh, opinion of insurance. They're all thieves and bastards, but uh, that's beside the point. <laughs> and if you work in insurance, I, I didn't really mean that. I was just joking. Uh, <laughs> You ever notice how often insurance companies are like the bad guys in, I don't know, Grisham movies or or something like that? I just remember UG Foster, who was a relatively well-known sci-fi author, recently died of cancer. And unfortunately, she had to spend part of her last weeks alive fighting with insurance companies to get them to pay for things like, you know... Those experimental procedures like chemotherapy that people, you know, you know, they're not even sure if that's, you know, really valid medical uh, procedures. So, so they, they, they wanted to fight it and they made her fill out a bunch of paperwork and waste the last bit of her life on crap like that. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm <laughs> totally off topic. Uh, American Family Insurance commercial has Russell Wilson in it, who is the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, who is a football team that I really dislike, I have to admit. I don't like the Seattle Seahawks, but the, the stuff he says in the commercial was really cool stuff. Um, and it really went with my message. And so I thought, you know what? I have got to get this in there. And one of the one line that I really wanted in there, and I couldn't get it to work because you can hear the stupid... A song playing in the background and it sounded terrible when put on top of the other Kevin McLeod song so I just recorded myself saying dreams don't come true dreams are made true which is what Russell Wilson says um, instead I did manage to get Russell Wilson in there and I think he's saying something like you know there will always be no's all you need is one yes or something like that I managed to get that one in there because the music wasn't too loud in the background. Um, but yeah, so I put on all my favorite quotes that are inspirational recently. And I don't know what it is, why I've started collecting quotes like that. When I started and what... What the deal is with that. But, uh, but yeah, I thought it would be cool. And the, the music was so awesome that I felt that it would be really cool to put it together. And so, yeah, I, I threw them all together. And Rish asked if, if it inspires me. I have to admit, I don't really listen to my show again and again or anything like that. You know, I, I, 
I don't even know if I listened to it a second time or a first time, I guess I should say, because speaking it probably doesn't count as a time of listening to it. Usually I say it, then I, I put it out usually the same day that I even speak it. But yeah, I don't listen to it a lot, but listening to that bit, as I, as I edited it, I really, really was inspired by it. I could, I sat and played it like three or four or five or six times after I'd finished it. Uh, the Phineas and Ferb bit, I think I added later after I'd finished the first run through, and I still probably plan on doing that again. Um, putting in more quotes if I come by them, I may add them to the uh, to the whole thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it ends off with the Goodbye, boys, have fun storming the castle. A kind of a nod at, uh, you know, not taking myself so seriously. And maybe even acknowledging how unlikely it is <laughs> that I'll actually succeed. It would take a miracle for me to actually uh, get somewhere because I don't know what it is. I just don't have... The motivation or the the drive for it or something whatever it is that successful people have I don't seem to have that um, I have a daughter who was born this way she just does what she has to do um, she has straight A's and my kids have the, there's this the district that they go to school in has this program where you can get online and see up to the minute a uh, record of all your assignments that you've turned in or haven't turned in and know exactly what your grade is. And uh, there was a time uh, uh, like a month or two ago where she was sick on a Friday. Or actually, I don't think she was even sick. She's one of those kids that won't even stay home from school when she's sick because she doesn't want to miss school. I think she had to go on like a band trip somewhere on a Friday. And so she missed one of her classes and didn't turn in something that she was supposed to turn in. And she couldn't turn it in again until like, I don't know, like the, the next Wednesday or Tuesday. It was it's, They don't have the same classes every day. So she had to wait, you know, the whole weekend and then a couple more days before she could actually turn in the assignment that she missed. And... When she turned it in, she came home. She just, like, checked on there. And she's like, good. Oh, man. I could not stand having that bad grade on there. I had to wait three days to get it off. You know, she's just that driven. Naturally just driven. Um, it amazes me. It's so not what I'm like. And I don't understand. <laughs> I still don't understand how she can be the fruit of my loins because it doesn't seem like she's a fruit off of my tree uh, because I'm not like that. And my wife's not really like that either, so it's kind of weird. But I guess some people are just have that drive and other people are like me that need an inspirational quote to get them to do something. So, so yeah, that uh, is the story behind the uh, song and the inspirational quotes. Um, they inspire me. They definitely do. Every time I hear them, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear them and they kind of make me feel like I can do better. I don't think I've heard from anybody saying whether they appreciate it or not. One person did at one point say, hey, more Phineas and Ferb, yeah! Which is, I think, the only comment that I've gotten from that more Phineas and Ferb references um although Rush Outfield apparently is inspired by it he likes it and cared enough to record a comment so that's nice there's one person that it really means something to um but yeah I think it was still worth it I think it's worth it even if even if Rish is the only one who likes it I like it and because I like it I think it's worth it to me I don't really care um, you know, the whole point of this entire ankle cast is just basically a, a way to keep myself uh, moving forward. 
It's to make myself do what I say I do, say I will do. I say I'm going to do this, and if I don't tell anybody, there's no reason that I have to actually do it. There's no reason for it. I could just completely, you know, pretend I'd never, ever thought of it. Um, but by, you know, putting it out there, now there are people that know. And if I don't do it, well, I have to kind of admit to being a failure, admit to being lazy, ask people's forgiveness for being such a piece of crap, uh, etc. So I think that it's totally worth it, even if that's all it does is that, um, I don't know, uh, did I answer all your questions, Rish? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, first off, uh, Zig Ziglar. Oh, Zig Ziglar. What did I call him? Zip, zippy? Something like that. But <laughs> secondly, <laughs> there's no place called fetal photos. You made that up. And, uh, and well, then I wanted to make it interesting. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, you had, I, I had asked you, how long did it take you to do that montage? That's oh, okay. I'm curious about. Yeah, it, it didn't take me that long. I did it in an evening. Although I want to say I may have spent another day gathering the quotes just kind of while I was doing other stuff on the computer. I was like, oh, yeah, and I need this one. And so I looked for it on YouTube, and then I would start it downloading, and then I would do something else. Or I can't remember exactly how that went, but it was something like that. So altogether, maybe two or three hours tops. Probably less considering that my uh, attention span probably wouldn't last that long. <laughs> Unlike your daughter's. Right. Uh, the, here's a weird thing. I went to my mom's house after work on Sunday for Sunday dinner, and she had a... Uh, I'm sure your wife would know what they're called, but, you know, like one of those things where it's like, welcome to our humble home, and you put it on the wall okay. where you first come in. Whoa, Whoa we got nailed by sprinklers. Sweet. Um, what do you call that? You know what I'm talking about? Or it's yeah, like, I know what you're talking may about. May all who enter here leave as friends. <laughs> I don't know, you if, know? There's a, uh, if there's a Let's say it's a particular placard, okay? name for it. She's got a, a cross pl- stitch? No. Oh, so okay. she's got a placard that she must have just gotten in the last little while. but And she hadn't even hung it up yet, but it was on the floor. And it said... You miss every shot you don't take. Oh, yeah, that's what... Uh, and I was like, holy crap, that is from Biggs uh, <laughs> Crossing the Divine Montage. Take I, the shot, man. Yeah, that was uh, Kevin Smith that said that one. That came from that same bit. Anyway, He's talking I, about hockey. Oh, no, no, I know. I, I want to say Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, oh, been Kevin the guy just said adores it. Wayne Gretzky, and that's one of the things that Gretzky said, and... Yeah, I, I, but I was just really surprised because I wondered, is, has that been around for years and years? Is that from Wayne Gretzky? It's not like my mom is listening to the uh, <laughs> the Smodcast or something, but but I just uh, I, I was really surprised by that. She's, she's been listening to the Anklecast. Yeah. She doesn't listen to the Smodcast, but she does listen to the Anklecast because that has way more listeners than the Smodcast. <laughs> um, but, you, you know, one thing that you said stuck with me you know the show is a way of keeping your, yourself going because you know you said in a public forum that you were going to do something and when we're recording this we're still like a month out from when we're going to start our novels uh, and in your last ankle cast you had mentioned we're going to write novels this year right did I mention it I think just, I mentioned that yes we were talking we'll about it but I'll say yes and we'll move on but uh, <laughs> the fact that you and I mentioned it on the, what's it called? The show that we do. That Gets My Goat? The, yeah, which also nobody listens to. <laughs> True um, But it, the fact that it's out there in a public forum makes me feel a little bit more obligated to do it. Because as it stands, I don't know what my novel is going to be about. But I know I have to do it. Because I said I was going to do it. And, and, he, and, and I, I really desperately hope I can do it. I hope I don't give up halfway through. Because you know me. I mean, you were just talking about what a piece of crap you are. 
I, I, I am also a piece of crap. And there are so many projects that I have abandoned halfway through or partway through. And so I'm afraid of that raising its ugly head sometime this summer when it's, you know, dupo rimo. <laughs> you know, the Dune Steve, whatever it was. The, <laughs> we, the Dune Steve version of NaNoWriMo. And, uh, but because people know that we said we're going to write a novel this, this year, and even if it's only one or two people, I feel like, well, I, I'm not going to come crawling back to them and saying, oh, you know what, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I, it was too hard. Or, you know, I know I said I would, but I'm not. I, I, I've changed my mind. And, and there was one person who uh, had commented on that, who said, oh, hey, I think that that's great that you guys are going to do that. Uh, I imagine writing a novel is the writer equivalent of running a marathon. And you used to always talk about, you know, one day I'm going to, what's the word, I'm going to build up to a marathon. You know, I mean, you know, you know uh -huh. I, I'm going to do a little bit, I'm going to do a half marathon, whatever it is, until finally I have the strength in my glutes to run a marathon and... And so, you know... And I've got some big glutes these days, too, man. They're really getting up there. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I just... I, the fact that somebody said, oh, hey, kudos on you guys writing a novel. That's, that's cool that you can do it. means that there's at least one person that is going to hold us to it. Yeah, I want to say that same person said, yeah, I hope you guys write a novel. I'd buy it. Oh, see, that! And so, that yeah. is, well, See, what a cool thing to say. And that person probably said that as motivation for us, hoping that we would take it in the light that we are taking it. Of, oh, thank you, man. I, well, then I hope not to let you down when you do buy it kind of thing. Oh, my Lord. There is a store called Fetal Photos. <laughs> Wait, we're driving past it again? What, what's going on? Are we it's lost? A, it's a, uh, a franchise thing. They're popping up all over town. No! <laughs> I think we're lost. I think we're going in circles. Anyhow, um, I guess I will leave you to your show. But but you know how it is. Once there's a microphone in front of me, it's like, well, now it's my show. Well, that's why I'm going to have to open the door and push you out. Uh, I'm sorry that we're going freeway speeds while we do it. But, uh, whoa, I almost hit a guy on a bicycle. That was close. He was hiding behind my rearview mirror. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'm just going to have to do he that. He's going to be hiding behind your rear view tire. <laughs> yeah, too. there you go. I was hiding behind my rear view mirror and almost got behind the rear tire. Uh, yeah, so thanks for stopping by, Rich Outfield. And uh, I'm going to go on with the show without you. Okay. Just say. So there you go. Uh, that was uh, the answer to the question. Um, if you have a question, you can uh, send it in to me, and yeah, I will. I will play it on the show, and I will. I will answer it. Um, I can't guarantee that I will have you in the car with me, uh, but uh, you know, I'll still try and answer it to the best of my abilities, at the very least. Um, so yeah, that uh, is kind of what's been going on with me for the last month. Things just kind of fell apart on me. But now it's May, which I guess when it comes down to it is usually a very bad month for me because May is sweeps time. And when sweeps happen in news, you do this thing, you make sweeps, particular sweeps pieces. They're, they're promotable stories. They're, they're worked on more than just day of, which is what television news usually is. You, you have a day turn story. You find out about the story when you get there at work, and then the reporter runs out, and they interview some people on it, and they do a story for the 5, and then they do a story for the 10 o'clock, and, you, you know, that's the way it usually is. You turn it in several versions of the story each day. But what we try and do in sweeps as we have these stories that are planned ahead of time so that they can make promos and that they can run commercials to say, watch our show tonight and you'll find out why there are bed bugs in hotels. 
uh, stuff like that. Um, and the deal with that is those stories have to be edited. They have to be edited on top of all the other stuff that has to be edited. And those stories are always very extravagant. They are twice as long as a normal story, sometimes more than that. And they are twice or way more than that complicated than a regular story. And so I find myself having uh, very little time to do anything when Sweeps comes around. I'll find myself working overtime, staying late, etc. Usually May is not a good month for me. Um, I've already done two sweep stories so far this this sweep sweeps has been going on it started early it started like jeez it's felt like it started like april 20th or something um i think it ends may 20th uh which will give me a couple of breathing room weeks although not really because then people will go on vacation the one nice thing about sweeps is that nobody is allowed vacation so i don't have to work extra for that uh but I'd have to work extra for other stuff. So anyways, yeah, it is, uh, it is sweeps time this month, but I still mean to be better. I was trying to decide what I could write, what I should do for the intervening few weeks before it's time to start into, uh, Dupo Rymo. And, uh, uh, yeah, it, uh, I don't know what I don't you know you this is the way I am when I when I write I have a story and it burns in my mind you know what I mean I have a bunch of stories in my mind but there's one that is burning that's on fire that I think about all the time and then all the rest are, are back burners these this is front burner story and basically I gotta work on what's on the front burner because it's the one thing that I'm excited about if I try to force myself to work on back burner stories it just doesn't work um, and so recently front burner has become this idea for a story that I have called the gauntlet and uh, the gauntlet is uh, what I think I'm going to make my Dupo Rymo uh, book about. My Dupo. Dupo Rymo. Tuesday Book Writing Month. I don't know. Anyways. Dupo Rymo. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and that's what's my front burner story right now, is that story. It's burning in my mind, and I. I I don't know if I could write something else uh, in the interim. Um, I guess we'll have to see. I think what I may do is just start a little early, start planning uh, this novel out, and uh, that will be my way of uh, writing for the next month. And I guess that'll give me a little bit of a head start. Rish said I could do that and then crush the competition under my feet um so you know i'm always up for crushing competition especially when it's rich so uh <laughs> so yeah I, maybe that's what i'll do for the remainder of the month is start working on the gauntlet um but yeah, I am going to uh, I'm going to improve on these things. I'm going to improve with writing, and I'm going to improve also with my uh, my weight loss efforts. I got to get myself back into the habit, and I found earlier in the year that that took a lot of effort. It took a lot of days of trying and failing before I finally managed to be good for an entire day through and and then it took even more time to do it two days in a row and eventually it got to the point where I was doing it every day and I lost a lot of weight doing that taking care of myself like I should and so yeah I am uh, I'm gonna work on both of those things I'll be back again next month 
with another podcast and hopefully with another little bitty story like uh, the one that I shared with you today. And uh, I'll tell you how it went. Um, tell you how much I got ready for my Dupo Dubo Rimo novel. And, uh, and I'll tell you how much I lost. How many pounds. All right. So thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, I hope that you guys uh, all have a good month. Hope it's successful. Better than my uh, April, anyway. We'll see how May goes. Talk to you later. Thanks for listening. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're going to do today. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye. Bye.